So let's talk about Mustang strut rods. What is it? How does it work? And why would we ever want to make it adjustable? Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So this is the lower control arm from a classic Mustang, 6566 to be specific. And this is a stock Mustang strut rod. Well, sort of. Normally you don't have this pipe in the middle, you don't have threading here, and you don't have threading here. What you have is two ends with a solid piece in between. In other words, a strut rod is normally a solid unit. I didn't have one. What I had was the end that attaches to the lower control arm, a threaded tube, and I had some old scrap steel with the other end, and basically for nothing other than the purpose of this video, I threaded it so that I could thread it into the tube. So pretend for the next few minutes that you do not see this tube, and we have a solid piece of steel from one end of the strut rod to the other. So the lower control arm on a classic Mustang moves up and down. But because there's a rubber bushing in here, it can also move side to side. And that's going to cause issues as you're driving down the road. As you hit a bump, it needs to move this way. But we don't want it moving this way. Enter the lowly strut rod. Now the way this works is pretty simple. It bolts solidly to this end. And then this end has this machined surface that normally doesn't look so bad. This strut rod was totally wasted when it was taken out of the vehicle and would never be reused other than maybe cutting this end off and threading it. But the way it normally works is you have two bushing that sandwich a hole in the frame. And what this allows is as this is moving up and down, this is in a solid spot, you can have flex at the bushing end. Now, that in and of itself is not a bad design. The rubber bushings allow for road vibration and road noise not to translate into the car, making it uh, more enjoyable to drive. And handling-wise, it's okay. There's not a lot of slop as it's moving up and down. It's held into place. Really, it's a decent way to do it. The problem happens on two specific activities that we do when driving. The first one is accelerating. The second one is braking. Because this is rubber, it flexes. And when we accelerate hard or we brake hard, these bushings have the tendency to compress. And that is going to cause your control arm to move for an aft. Now, it's not going to move as drastically as what I just showed here. But it is going to move, and that is going to create some minor steering issues. And it potentially will affect how the vehicle handles, especially on a performance ride. The other issue with this is there's no adjustment. So, typically, a washer goes on this side. You have the rubber bushing fit into place, you have the pocket that it fits into, then the second bushing, and then you put a washer on that end and you tighten the nut down. Now this nut must be tightened all the way to the shoulder. And you do that to lock it into place and keep your suspension from coming apart while driving. On later years, there was actually some adjustment in here. And you would tighten this nut or loosen this nut to adjust your caster. And caster is simply the angle of the spindle. If you moved the lower control arm one direction, it would give you more caster. If you moved it the other direction, it would give you less. But on a 6566 car, there is no adjustment here. All the adjustments have to be done with shims at the upper control arm, which frankly is a major pain in the butt. So there is lots of room for improvement in a stock strut rod. And that is where we enter something like this right here. This is an adjustable strut rod from Rose Hill Performance Parts. Now I want to be perfectly clear, this is not a paid advertisement. I am not showing you this to get kickbacks from Rose Hill. And I didn't get this as a freebie. So you need to know that this is my unbiased opinion of this product, and I think it's a pretty good one. So there are 
two advantages to going with a strut rod like this. First and foremost is a fixed end in the pocket up inside the Mustang frame. So instead of using bushings, we now have this spacer that fits into the pocket and we tighten everything down and lock it into place. And then we have a heim joint that can articulate up and down freely without any issues, but has no fore and aft movement. So acceleration and braking is not going to cause it to shift. So by going with a unit like this, you are removing a fair amount of slop from the suspension of your car. So the second thing that a unit like this adds is adjustability. If we take and connect this here, I'm only doing this to just kind of hold this base in place. And now this end goes up to the frame. If I turn this tube, it lengthens this unit. If I turn it the other direction, it shortens this unit. And what that allows you to do is adjust your alignment for caster. The other thing that's really nice with these is you can get more caster. Typically on a classic Mustang, getting more than a couple of degrees of caster using the shims on the upper control arm is a challenge. But with a unit like this, you can go in, shim the upper control arm, get the camber set. You can set the caster roughly, and then you can give yourself a couple more degrees right there. This kit comes with two head units, two swedge tubes, two sets of jam nuts, and two lower control arm ends. And it's really a nice kit, very well put together, and is a great way to improve the handling on your Mustang. But if you are not interested in buying parts ready-made, you're more of a DIYer like I am, something like this can be done. You can take an original stock strut rod, you can cut it, you can thread it, and then you can fabricate your own head unit. Now there's a lot of work involved in that, and it is something where you will have to compare your time and your effort to the money that you want to spend. I actually have a web page showing how to make adjustable strut rods. You can check that out. But if you would rather just buy a quality set, these are top notch. They're very well priced, they're very affordable, and they are high quality units. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments and I will get back to you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.